Kevin says. Um, I do have, is it? I gotta get on the mic, as they say. All right, welcome and announcements. Talk louder. Um, in the back fellowship hall, you will notice some very um, attractive and valuable baskets. Those are, get this, free to whoever wants them. So Russ will be at the, at the end of the service, Russ will be holding you back so that you don't fight over them. <laughs> so they're from Mary Reichenbach. She's um, decluttering and would like to share those with everyone. So get a piece of um, Mary history and take it home um, and use it. And, and also, you can carry in that basket, you can carry some cucumbers from the Leonard's Garden. So it really is a win-win today. Tuesday, I'm sad to say there's no Taco Tuesday, but there is taco barbecue, or tu there is Tuesday barbecue. So they're gonna meet here at the church at 11 o'clock and go to Zarda and be at Zarda to carpool. And it, um, so they hope to get to Zarda barbecue on 87th street at 11.30. Um, so meet here at 11 o'clock Tuesday for barbecue. Anybody else have an announcement? Yes, we have Robin from the gallery. I just want to say thank you, everyone, for your generosity to Center of Hope. We have good, good turnout for our um, school supplies. We're going to leave it up for a couple more weeks. And so um, if you want to bring some more, that would be wonderful. I am collecting on Saturday food. Um, so just keep that in mind. But, um, but thank you, you guys are so generous and I appreciate your, your generosity very much. Anybody else have anything to share? Kenny? Kenitha Cutler? Oh, yes. yes, she has a story to share. Okay, I have a story from yesterday. Um, at work yesterday, I was talking to a pastor who said he has a, uh, signal that he sends to his wife when he needs water uh, up at the podium. I said, and I said, oh, and the deacons all went, oh, we forgot the water. He said, you do not understand. He said, isn't it funny that nobody appreciates the deacons until they're not there? And I just wanted to share, thank you to our deacons for making everything so easy for us on Sunday morning. And yes, I did put you. some water up there. We've got sodas and ice and everything up here, so we're stopped. Um, I'm sure all of you know Jane, our speaker this morning. I got my notes in here. So I have, of course, a couple of questions for Jane. I'm getting a little feedback. Um, yours, you have to flip yours on. Oh, no, that's from this thing. Yeah, you're good. Hello. Okay. Yeah, so. Um, Let's just go right into the first one. Um, what animal do you compare yourself to? What is your spirit animal? Dolphin. The dolphin. Yeah. I thought it was going to be dog. Yeah, it's a close second. Dog is a close second. So Has you, to be dolphin. You know, at like the Royals game or baseball games, when the batter goes to the plate, they always play a song that that player picks, and it's called the walk-up song. So, Jane, what would your walk-up song be? Super Tramp, logical song. <laughs> you gotta be old as old as me to know it. <laughs> and we, I bring up the music because the theme today is let my spirit sing or always sing. Um, so we got another music question in a minute. What, you can time travel, but only to one historical event. Which one do you choose? I have to say, especially since being in Sunday school today, <laughs> I really would like to go back, you know, maybe make sure I'm safe, but I want to talk with the 
early Christians, maybe when Jesus was still alive, just kind of sit there, you know. I don't know when exactly, but in his in his ministry time, I want to sit there and talk to him. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, that would I safely. Would, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, favorite city besides Kansas City in the U.S. In the U.S. to visit, I don't know if I want want to live there, but to visit, I really love D.C. I love. I love how American history is so prevalent there. I love to go there. Yeah. Pen or pencil? Pen. What is your favorite song at the very moment? At this very moment? Yeah. Can I still say a logical song? I mean. <laughs> yeah. Since it's there, yeah. Okay. Silence or music? It depends. I cannot work with music. I wish I could, but sometimes silence is important to me, but I, um, yeah, there's no wrong. There's no wrong answer. Yeah. Both. <laughs> Both. <laughs> wrong answer. Thank you. And then you can get it off now. Um, so let my spirit always sing. Jane was over the other night and we were talking about the service and, and music. And last year, uh, five friends and, and myself, we had a little, every Friday, we would text, we called it Random Song Friday, and we would text each other a song, not really a random song, but a song that means something to us. And at the beginning, it was so, I mean, everybody looked forward to Friday to, just to learn a little bit about your friend that you've known for 30 years, but it's just a little more insight. And I, I just loved it. And then my friends kind of trailed off. We still did it, but there wasn't an enthusiasm and a sharing of your soul. Um, not with everybody, but a couple of people, we still did it and we were sad when they said, I think we're done with that. I'm like, man, come on guys, your soul should let my spirit always sing. We should always have music in our life and songs that we sing, which leads right to the call of worship. Be filled with the spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll stand and sing our opening hymn.
please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come together in this place to worship you. We ask that your Holy Spirit would descend on us and penetrate our hearts. You are the source of life, wisdom, and blessing. You are the reason we come here today. Be a part of our worship as we seek to draw closer to you this morning. We also ask that you remove those obstacles, those distractions, and those worries that prevent us from entering your presence. This we ask in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Today's prayer for peace is inspired by the hymn, You Have Come Down to the Lake Shore. The Community of Christ sings 582. You need my hands, my exhaustion, working love for the rest of the weary, a love that's willing to go on loving. Spirit of searching, it is difficult to keep searching and working for peace. It is difficult to live your command to love one another. It is difficult not to. God be with us in our exhaustion that comes from traveling the noble river of peace. May we feel your comforting and energizing presence. The tides ebb and flow and the seasons do too. Our quest for peace must not. We must persist. Help us to go on loving, to go on pursuing peace. When it feels like we've said the same thing, we've fought the same fight and we've forgiven the same wrongs over and over, open our ears to your call. May we be willing to abandon our small boats in the pursuit of peace. Draw us to the lake shore, to the community that quests alongside us. In the name of Jesus, who is in the wind of our sails, amen.
in this part of the service, we are going to enter um, or continue a time of prayer and um, uh, do a, what is sometimes called a spiritual exercise. Um, although really it's a prayer. This is a breath prayer. And when Jane asked me to do it, I was a little apprehensive. Uh, it's not my, well, I didn't think it was my favorite um, uh, activity, but a breath prayer actually is very, can be very calming and um, um, uh, edifying. And I, I learned um, that it traces its origins very early on in the church. And I was like, okay, as a traditionalist, that, that appeals. So we're going to uh, do a breath prayer. Um, and the idea is we will inhale with words and exhale with words, which is not necessarily to be done out loud, but in your head. Um, we will be saying the phrase, um, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And that phrase is scriptural, comes from the book of First Samuel, um, and is what Samuel would say uh, to, the, to the promptings of the Lord. So as we inhale, the words are, speak, Lord, and exhale, your servant is listening. So we want to listen to God's very subtle, at times, uh, voice as he speaks to us today. You may close your eyes or keep them open. This will not be very long, but we want to kind of get into that rhythm and then um, you can carry that with you if you wish into the service. Inhale, speak Lord. Your servant is listening. Speak Lord. Your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And now I invite you to continue this on your own. We will do two more repetitions. Amen.
There it is. Let my spirit sing. You don't need me to preach today because we've already had everything that we've needed. Ryan called his prayer the prayer of receptivity, which I loved, especially after Brian and I saw the reaction of this congregation as he walked us through it. And then when I'm listening to Roxanne, I was thinking to myself that she and Sharon are the perfect example of what I'm talking about today in terms of what it means to have the spirit of receptivity and the spirit of collaboration. Because anybody who knows about musicians, especially when they've worked with Sharon, is that Sharon goes and she helps us find music and then she helps us learn the music. And then when we're singing or playing our flute or whatever it is that we're doing as musicians, she listens to us and she changes her accompaniment to match us. For those of you who don't know, that is really, really hard to do. Very few musicians can do that. And when you have a musician like Sharon, you feel safe. Let my spirit sing is our theme. And of course, I started with song. As you can see from the songs we've already sung, that song, that song, Let Us Pray Together, is one of my own favorites that we used to belt out in Wednesday night prayer service without accompaniment. Remember that? I don't know why. I still don't know why accompaniment was never allowed in prayer service, but we, we grew up with that. But when our voices join together, we are, we are our own accompaniment with each other. And that, I heard that as we were singing that today. Then my thoughts went to the scriptures and the Psalms, because I love Psalms. Everybody knows that about me, I think. And you wonder why I love the Psalms. I've probably told this story before, but my journey with Psalms started when I was a youth leader with Jennifer. We came up with this bright idea to have our young 17-year-olds write their own Psalms, and we were worried <laughs> that it wasn't going to work. But somehow, after a weekend, of sharing with each other and anyone who's been to a reunion or retreats or events where we have found unity within our church, those kids found it within their souls to write the most beautiful psalms I've ever heard. And so I've been trying to capture that moment in my own life ever since that weekend. And what I realize, as I have learned to be your pastor these last three years, is that what it means to sing together is that we do it as a group. We had an exercise, which we got a lot of people at our meeting last Sunday morning because it was about what is our identity? What is our passion? What is our future? And we all had brilliant ideas. 
and the passion that I saw in all of you as you were speaking meant you love this congregation and you love this building. And I want to honor that, by the way, because I grew up in this building too. But then something magical happened after the meeting and continues today. Penny came up to me enthusiastically saying, you know, maybe we can collaborate with Lenexa. Her brother goes to that congregation. There are ideas milling around with all of you. Dorothy, I heard yours. Yours, you and Russ are talking about some sort of a jam session during the um, the day that that Rob Saturdays, Robin, when you're sitting there with your Center of Hope collection, they want to come and jam music with you. <laughs> and I, I said, "Oh, Robin will love that." <laughs> but this is what this is so exciting for me that you as a people continue to think and wonder and collaborate with each other. So what does this scripture mean that, that, that Brian read for us? Be filled with the spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the spirit. Sing and make music from your heart. Give thanks to the Father for everything and in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. One of the worship helps suggestions was they went back to the study of language, which I love also. I'm a Tolkien fan, as many of you know, and one of the reasons why I'm a Tolkien fan is because he was a linguist and I had to study to see what that meant, but he wrote his own languages, which I thought was just thrilling. But in our, in our worship helps, what they talk about is that there's an old Greek and Aramaic form of language that we don't have anymore, that, we, that, that is used seldom, but in English, it, it, it is used as a, this collaborative concept of let us do this together, let us rejoice, let us go forward together. And I like that it is meant in terms of we as a group are moving forward together. And that's what I see all of you doing. That's what I see us doing. So I want you to go to section 161 and I had I had it out there if you um, picked it up with your order of worship, then pull it out. If you didn't, raise your hand, and Russ has copies, and he's gonna give you. So I'm gonna have a little lesson plan as a part of our service today, because let us read scripture together. Okay, I'm not gonna read it all. <laughs> and of course, some of it is over here on our, on our windows. 161, 1A says, lift up your eyes and fix them on the place beyond the horizon to which you are sent. Journey in trust, assured that the great and marvelous work is for this time and for all time. That is what Grant McMurray said to us on April 7th, 2000, so 24 years ago. 
He also said, this is 3A, open your eyes and feel the yearnings of your brothers and sisters who are lonely, despised, fearful, neglected, unloved. Reach out in understanding, clasp their hands, and invite all to share in the blessings of community created in the name of the one who suffered. So if we look at this scripture in that Middle English, let us do this together language, lift up our eyes. Open our hearts and feel the yearnings of our brothers and sisters. Let us move forward and find those within us and within our community who are lonely, despised, fearful, neglected, unloved. It is part of our journey as a people of the temple. That's the title of the scripture. Become a people of the temple. What does it mean to become people of peace? Praying for one another, in my mind, means action. And it means collaboration. How do we accompany one another in our journeys? This last week, we had a book club meeting. And um, David Lurie led us. I've always loved him. He is, he is Joyce's partner, beautiful man. But I was especially impressed with the way he led our group because our book was a very difficult read. It was a novel about the Vietnam War and it was called The Women by Kristen Hanna. If anybody, had, if, if you want to read it, I actually have it in my book bag. You can borrow it from me. But what impressed me about David and it was, it was fascinating to me because David and many of the people in our group were of that age group that were in their teens and early 20s during the Vietnam War. And so what he was able to do was he was able to facilitate our conversation so that people who lived through that time were sharing their stories with each other. So we heard about a woman that wanted to go to the University of Virginia but she was denied because women weren't allowed in university in 1971. And, and then we, we heard about, you know, what it meant for these young men who had turned in their draft cards and were waiting, either looking at the radio, listening to the radio or looking at the newspaper, waiting to see if their numbers, if their birth dates would come up. I mean, there, it, was, it was palpable, the emotion that people were sharing in that room. And what David did for us, and this, this is what was so impressive, was that he inspired us to talk it through. And so we had these like brilliant insights from people, you know, of, of what it means to you know, sometimes you can't share everything with your family. You know, sometimes silence is inside your heart and you've got to find ways, other ways to reach out. And so I'm, I'm excited about Ryan and his music therapy because it, it's on April's heart too to talk about music therapy and, and uh, different ways of, of therapy that isn't just about talking things through. You know, I've always believed in the spirit of of, of presence for people. And I, of course, I'm reminded of Avis and her art therapy and how she taught us that art 
can be a way of healing. But what it reminded me of this past Thursday night is that to be a people of the temple, to be a, a people where the spirit is singing within us, we need to collaborate. That is just a word that is on my heart all the time in this congregation. We collaborated last Sunday. We have the list of things we talked about in the fellowship hall. I've left it on the whiteboard, on the easel. And, and I, I want us to continue to talk to each other, to continue to express not only our own needs for this congregation, but our own journey as a people because Mission Road has this scripture as our theme. And we need to journey in that trust with each other to say, what is the song in our hearts? What is it that we want to do together? Clearly, we want to do Center of Hope. What does that look like? Today, what does it look like a year from now? We have so many people doing so many wonderful things on your own, and that's good. But I'm personally the kind of person that needs others in my own ministry. I do think it's important to have prayer on your own and to have alone time with God and to you know, walk in that woods or the mountains or the ocean or wherever you find God. But we come together as a people in collaboration with God, not just each other. We are the body of Christ. What does that mean to be the body of Christ? It means we listen to each other. Sharon, I keep using you as my example. <laughs> because I know how hard that is to listen and respond and accompany. Sharon knows that she's not the star. She doesn't want to be the star. That's not her job. Her job is to support that musician. That is the perfect metaphor for what it means to be a people of the temple. So I ask us today and tomorrow, and you're gonna hear me ask it a lot, what is our identity? Where do you want to go? What do we want to do as the body of Christ together to serve each other and to serve our community? And more importantly, to serve God together.
they asked me, or Jane asked me, to pick out a song for Operatory. And I hope I can get through this without crying because it's really close to my heart. Take my life and let it be consecrated, to, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days and let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands, my feet, my love. At thine impulse, let them move. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my king. Take my silver and my gold, for thine I would not withhold. Take my heart, my mind, my will. Let them be thy servants still. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasures there. Take myself, I will be ever only all for thee.
Let us pray for one another that our hearts and minds may blend as we grow in love and mercy till life shall end. We can see how others need us. May we also dare to say that in love we'll share together for each other, let us pray. Lord, help us to remember to sing and collaborate and be assured that you are with us. In Jesus' name, amen.